Ladies and gentlemen, got a little bit of Anthony Hamilton in our background. I don't know, it's something about this man's voice, and you can tell that he's paid a lot of dues to be where he is. Anthony Hamilton, everybody. Excuse me one second, got a call. <coughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this particular video is dealing specifically with foreclosure is a last resort, last resort, not the first resort. The moment you go into default, the very first thing the banks do is send you a notice of default and threaten to foreclose on your property. That's not what the contract says. Let's look at the sample, sample, okay? This is a sample if the borrower defaults. Ladies and gentlemen, you see all these numbers? That's like 19. This is way at the bottom of the loan. We're going to go to number 10. Okay, I want y'all to see number 10. We talked about it earlier briefly, but I want you to see number 10. The fact that the lender jumps all the way to number 18 and 19 is not what the agreement says. You want to highlight, now it may be different on some mortgage agreements. Mortgage insurance, if the lender requires mortgage insurance, it has nothing to do with the lender. It has everything to do with the government. Requires mortgage insurance as a condition of making a loan. The borrower shall pay the premiums required to maintain the mortgage insurance in effect. If for any reason the mortgage insurance coverage required by the lender ceases. Ladies and gentlemen, let me let you know that all these home loans are government obligations. They're already insured automatically. Every home loan you get is already insured because the government, under those so-called banking acts, has ensured that each one of these mortgages will be insured. Because the banks were crying. When are we going to get the money? When are we going to get this? When are we going to get that? So the government is insured. It. Let me let you know also why they're insured. Because as a pay attention to this word, some of you don't like it, but I want you to pay attention to it because it's your best friend for right now. As a citizen of the United States, you are an obligation of the United States. Backed by the United States full faith and credit. The mortgage is insured. Then they file a claim. Now, pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an option. This insurance is in place for one reason. What's the reason the mortgage insurance is in place? It tells you right there on your deed. Oh, this is the deed of trust. Okay? This is on your deed of trust. The borrower should continue to pay the lender the amount separately designated payments of the insurance due. Now, we go to the next section because it tells you mortgage insurance reimburses the lender or any entity that purchases the note for certain losses that may occur incur if the borrower does not repay the loan as agreed. The borrower is not a party to the mortgage insurance. Actually, you are a party to the mortgage insurance. The mortgage insurance documents that you're paying it. Of course, you are a party to the mortgage insurance. So that's called an unconscionable statement. Okay, it's not permitted. Okay, mortgage insurers evaluate the total risk of all such insurance in force from time to time and may enter into agreements with other parties to share or modify their risk to reduce losses. That's because they traded on the market, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? As a result of these agreements, the lender, any purchaser of the note, or any other insurer, or any other reinsurer, any other entity, any other affiliate of any other foregoing, may receive directly or indirectly amounts that derive from or might be characterized as a portion of the borrower's payments of the mortgage insurance in exchange for sharing or modifying the mortgage insurance risk and reducing the losses. If such agreements provide that an affiliate of the lender takes a share of the insurance risk in exchange for a share of the premiums paid to the insurer, the United States government, the arrangement is often termed as a captive reinsurance. Further, any such agreement will not affect the amount of the borrower has agreed to pay the mortgage insurance. 
or any other terms of the loan. Such agreements will not increase the amount the borrower owes for the mortgage insurance, and they will not entitle the borrower to a refund. Ladies and gentlemen, you notice how they place this in all dark language? Do yourself a favor. It says, any such agreements will not affect the rights of the borrower has, if any, with respect to the mortgage insurance under the Homeowners Protection Act of 1998 or any other law. There are several laws that protect you with insurance. We're not worried about you getting any money. The fact is that I want you to pay attention to what we're bringing up here. Under the deed of trust, foreclosure is the last resort. This is the pooling and servicing agreement. The pooling and servicing agreement says that foreclosure is a last resort. Get a copy of your pooling and servicing agreement from the servicer. If the servicer refuses to give that to you, get it from the, put it in writing, get it from the, what you call it, uh, the securitization trustee. If that person refuses to give you a copy of the pooling and servicing agreement, you're part of that agreement. You are part of that agreement. Don't let them tell you you are not. That agreement does not exist without your consent. That is the trading of your property on the market. It is your property. You are the property owner. They don't get to trade the property. Yes, they're trading the property. They're not just trading the note. They're trading the property on the market. Okay? Because they're claiming that they have an interest collateral in the property and that's what they're trading on the market without your agreement there is no trade so yes you are part of that agreement now here's the thing the loan can be paid current the loan can be paid in full there can be an agreed modification ladies and gentlemen there are other ways to cure a default, such as mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance pays the lender should the borrower default. Okay? The defendant argues that the PSA for uh, and foreclosure is the last resort. Accordingly, the defendant PSA states that the following, following a default, corrective action must be taken. It specifies four ways four ways. One of those ways is to pay the loan in full or to current. That can be done with, pay attention, insurance. And once you bring it current, you can then modify it if you choose to. Hey, that's why you have insurance. The insurance protects you as well as the lender. Do not go by the deed of trust. If you're paying it, if the lender, pay attention, if the lender wants protection, there is no law requiring you to pay for their protection. But because you're paying for it, you're assuming the risk. If you default and you didn't do it on purpose, if it was as a result of circumstances, for instance, COVID, then you have the right to demand the lender get their money from the insurance company. And you need to send me proof that you've applied or made a claim for insurance because I'm not able to pay you anymore because of COVID. And you cannot foreclose on me until you've applied for the insurance. I need you to show me proof that you've applied for the insurance. Let's continue, shall we? The remedy to default is foreclosure. Actually, that is a lie. The remedy to default is in the agreement between the parties. Conversely, under the lien theory law of Wyoming, a mortgage is created when title was transferred by a deed to the buyer prior to payment. That means foreclosure. The remedy to de on default is foreclosure. And excuse, excuse, land, excuse, land contract under Wyoming law is also an executory contract under 365. Failure to buyer to perform complete payments of material breach to breach excuses performance by the seller. 
No, actually it doesn't. The breach, it's not a breach. The breach is covered by the agreement. And the protection for that breach of agreement is the insurance. With the insurance provision, there is no breach. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show it to you again. With the insurance, it protects the borrower. How? Because it pays the lender. The lender no longer has any other recourse but to get their money from the insurance. Any event of total taking, destruction, or loss of value to property, the miscellaneous proceeds shall be applied to the sum secured by the security agreement, whether or not then due, with the excess, if any, paid to the borrower. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. This is assignment of miscellaneous proceeds forfeiture. Ladies and gentlemen, this is number 11. This is after insurance. The insurance pays the lender, doesn't pay the borrower. Okay? The insurance pays the lender, does not pay the borrower. These agreements may require the mortgage insurer to make payments using any source of funds that the mortgage insurer may have available. Mortgage insurer, not you. Your agreement says that the insurance is supposed to pay. Is there insurance? Of course there is, because this was a government loan. Why? Because all property is owned by the government, by the state. Any so-called ownership is only by mere usury. Okay, that is March 9, 1933 Congressional Act known as the Economic Emergency Relief Act. That is a provision that Congress put in there, and that was their intent from their notes. Ladies and gentlemen, your mortgage insurance is there to protect you. You just have to speak up and don't let the courts tell you, no, that's not what that's for. Wait a minute. How are you going to tell me that's not what that's for? This is my agreement. I'm the one who wrote that. Go back and look at whose signature is on this unilateral contract. These are my words. You don't get to tell me what my intent was. That's how you correct them. You have to know you wrote the agreement. Well, did you default? Again, I gave them notice that they needed to now apply for the insurance. I asked them to show me proof they've applied for the insurance. Where's that proof at? Show it to me. If they haven't applied for the insurance, foreclosure is a last resort. They cannot resort to the last. They have to follow procedure according to the terms of the agreement. The grantor's intentions is law of the trust. Those were my intentions as written in the trust. So shut up with all that other bolts. I mean stuff. Uh, pardon me get a little excited when somebody's sitting up here trying to lie to me through words, through legalese. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Prohibits the power of sale in a real estate mortgage. No such power is contained in the deed, trust deed in question. Ladies and gentlemen, notice this. Foreclosure is the mere taking possession but requires foreclosure proceedings in a court of law. That's this statute. Okay, however, the remedy provided in the deed of trust is by way of foreclosure in a court or through non-judicial foreclosure. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. The remedy provided in your deed of trust is mortgage insurance, section 5 and 10. Usually section 5 and 10. You will have to find it in your deed of trust or trust deed. Let's go to number 5. We're at number 10. Let me show you why we say section 5 and 10 because they both deal with two insurances. They're both property insurance. One is mortgage insurance, the other is property insurance. Dagnabbit, where did the number five go? I didn't see it yet, y'all. That's not a number, that's not a number. There he is, property insurance. Five is property insurance, so that's so that nobody says that number 10 is that. 10 is mortgage insurance. That's why the banks, because they want to get paid, if you don't pay it, they will pay the mortgage insurance for you. 
okay? That's how you do your looking for your insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Now I will speak to you guys next. We've got one more video to do today, and then we'll do the next three uh, tomorrow or Friday, more than likely Friday. We'll be right back. Like I said, it will increase as far as remedy is concerned. You're just going to have to go and put all of these together and use all of them as one remedy. You can do that. You just will have to pay attention. Got to go.